I've been learning a lot as a parent lately. The Lord has been teaching me a lot. <clears throat> I think I'm very idealistic. And that's true of like my marriage. I, I have a way I think marriage should look. I have a way I think my sex life should look. I have a way I think my spiritual life should look. I have a way I think my parenting should look. My house should be run, right? It's a lot and of it, shooting. It's a lot of shooting, man. Don't shoot all over yourself, <laughs> but I do. And um, and and tr and uh, one thing I'm learning too uh, now, I think, is to how do you let go of... Because you have two two choices, right? If you have this idealized view of how parenting and kids should look and behave and engage with each other, right? You have that. You think that's the way, that's the ticket, that's what we're after. And then you have like the way things are. Um, I'm learning to like condescend from the way, maybe that's the wrong word, from the way I think things should be to the way things actually are and like get involved there. I, I'll give you just like a, a little example, right? So I don't know, just had this idea that it would be a beautiful thing if I had a little family and we would read good books <laughs> and we would love beautiful things and we wouldn't be caught up in the ways of the world and the latest friggin Marvel movie and video games and these, these stupid unholy things. Right? But then somehow my kids might like Minecraft. How the hell did this happen? <laughs> How did this snake get through the door? And then you've got your view of the way things should be. And then you see it somewhere. Like, so it is actually happening in some people's houses, mm, mm. which just makes you feel all the worse. Mm. What have I screwed up? If I'm unwilling to let go of that quote unquote perfect view, then I think I can really destroy my relationship with my children. So I think what the Lord's been teaching me is to condescend into their interests and like, tell me why you love that. Tell me what's beautiful about that. Mm -hmm. Like, why do you enjoy that? Show me that. And that's been the ticket, Father. Beautiful. Holy moly. That's yeah. been the ticket. But if I if I keep beating the drum and insisting that family prayer look the way I think it ought to look, I've just I've created more and more damage. And then when I think about my own childhood, the mo all I wanted, and I'm sure it's true of you and everybody watching, was for my parents to delight in me. Mm. Like to actually sit yes. and enjoy me. But if your parents or my parents just criticized us constantly because they were trying to have us reach this ideal that they had in their head, there's no time for delight. And I don't, want, right. I don't want to live like that. And mm. I don't want my kids to continually feel like disappointments. So as much as the Lord allows and as much as I'm submitting to him, I've been doing that. And when I do it, I just breathe and I'm like things are really okay. Like they're really okay. Like the, the wheels aren't falling off. Does any of that make sense? I'm just it trying to think it through sense. and maybe perfect you can sense. help me by saying it better. <laughs> well, I, I, I appreciated this about you from the first time that we talked. I think I heard you talking about, uh, your children. I think you might've been talking about Liam in particular. And I just, I just heard the love of a father for his children and, I was so moved by that. It, even to have this conversation shows how much you care and how much you're trying, how much they matter to you, how much they're in the center of your heart, the center of your life. You're trying to do your best by them. And then to tell them to be present does an incredible amount. Uh, I, to say more specifically about the, the things you were saying, I've really learned a lot from uh, Conrad Bars. He has this concept of affirmation, which is maybe a little different than what our society might think of, but it's it's fundamentally an affirmation of being. Like, it's good that you exist. Mm. Now, I can just say that to you, and that can be a little bit trite. How yeah. do I really show that to you? Yes. Well, I show you that you're a gift to me, that you move me, that you make a difference in my life, at the fundamental level of being, not because you did something, not because you could do something, not because you need to change, not because, because you exist, you are a gift to me. And I show that to you by the way that I look at you, the way I smile at you, the little gestures of, of encouragement, of delight uh, that I receive, that I make. And, and so you receive, so you experience yourself as a gift through my heart. And that helps you to be confident that you are really a gift. And it reinforces that. And then you grow. So my my image for this is like, you know, uh, if you imagine a little plant that's growing, and and maybe it's growing in some interesting directions, and maybe you think, 
if you have your ideal of what that plant ought to look like, I'm going to snip that off and yes. prune that off and clip that thing off and snip that thing off. You don't even know what the plant looks like. The most important thing we can do is water it. Ha. Huh. And, and we pour water into the roots, the ground, like it's good that that plant exists. Pour water into the roots and then it begins to grow. Now there's a place for pruning, but especially a tender plant or a plant that's withering doesn't need to be pruned. Huh. It needs to be watered. That's affirmation. I see. And then, and then it begins to grow and we can look at it together. But just those kinds of questions like, you know, what do you like about this? You're actually caring about his heart. Yeah about your children's hearts and that they're a gift to you and they yes. have something to add mm -hmm. to your life that their existence matters and moves you. Mm -hmm. And then they feel good about that. Then they want to become what God made them to be. And then you can discover that. I mean, it's amazing. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Before you go, I want to let you know about Exodus 90. Exodus 90 is, an, is a 90 day ascetical program for men who want to take their spiritual life to the next level. And it is starting up again on January 9th for tens of thousands of men all around the world. And that could be you. You could be in that number. This is a great program that helps people really begin to take their faith seriously. I found this out recently. I thought it was fascinating. Independent research shows that Exodus men report significant changes in their quality of life. Dramatic decrease in time spent on their phones, stronger satisfaction rates in their marriages, improved relationship with their kids, a more focused and intentional prayer life. For the past seven years, Exodus has helped more than 60 thousand, count them, 60,000 men build a roadmap for living with virtue in a culture that offers far too many paths to sin and destruction. So is this the year for you? Go to exodus90.com slash Matt. Click the link in the description below, exodus90.com slash Matt. Click the, click the link to learn more. Thanks.